Hey, this is Joe from Personas. In this video, I'm going to show you how to print plugins directly to your track while recording. Now, if you're new to recording an audio, I say skip this for now. Um, it might be more trouble than it's worth. I'll talk about some pros and cons to this approach at the end of the video. But the normal workflow for a digital audio system is we record our microphone onto a track and then we add plugins later. So generally speaking, the recorded audio is clean, meaning there's not EQ and compression on there. Now another workflow is you plug your microphone into some sort of external preamp slash channel strip that maybe has EQ and compression on there and you dial in that EQ and compression and that becomes part of the signal that gets recorded to the track. Now if you want to have analog hardware, I've got some here, it's really fun, but if you maybe don't want to shell out the money for that or you just want to try out that workflow without getting a piece of hardware, Studio One actually lets you do that really easily. So there are lots of, of interfaces out there and a lot of them tout being able to run plugins in real time as you're recording. Well, guess what? Studio One's been able to do that for really, like, really long time. But maybe you didn't know about it, so let me show that to you today. All right, so here's the scenario. We've got a vocal track. My microphone is running into the vocal. If I record something like this, you'll hear it sounds like this. Like this. Okay, so that sounds like my vocal. But let's say I was... I found this couple of settings that I really like on my vocal and I'm feeling brave and I just want to print that effect to the track itself. Here's what we do. Look in the bottom left hand side of your mixer window. You'll see this button called inputs and outputs. If you click inputs, check it out. We get this whole different view here that shows us every input into our system. So currently I'm, I'm running through my studio live. It has like dozens of inputs, but I've only got a handful set up in my I.O. setup because that's I only use a handful at a time. So it's showing me basically what's here on this inputs tab inside of my I.O. setup. And as you can see, my microphone is plugged into channel three and I actually have a tuner here, which is just a part of my template. So when I'm playing guitar, I can have a tuner right there without having to plug in my pedal board or anything else. That's kind of cool. But let's say I want to use this vocal slapback preset on my voice and have that get recorded. Well, let me uh, let me put on some headphones and let's monitor this vocal directly through Studio One. Check, Check one, one two. two. Here's my vocal. It's got some compression, EQ, delay, and a little tiny bit of distortion. Yeah. Okay, so what just happened? Let's let's remove all the plugins just to make sure there's no confusion here. Now, if I hit play, what will we hear on this vocal? Let's find out. Here's my vocal, it's got some compression, EQ, delay, and a little tiny... The effects are there. There's no plugin in this session now. Look, show me. Show me on the screen where there is a plugin. It's not there. I removed everything, but the effect is still there. We've essentially printed our effects to the audio. But instead of doing it after the fact, recording a clean vocal, adding plugins, and then printing there, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, we've actually recorded it on the way in. And now this is forever a part of that vocal track. So you may be asking yourself, why on earth would I want to do this? I can't go back and change it. I can't, if it's not the right sound, then I'm forever stuck with it. That's the point. I think while I love digital systems and clearly I love Studio One, there's a piece of the digital component that I don't love. And that's the fact that I can undo anything. I can record a super clean part and then I can add plugins and change plugins and change plugins and change plugins to my heart's content. And a lot of people, that's all they ever do. They record a little bit, they mess with it for years and they never like finish the song because they always have an infinite amount of options available to them. This approach forces me to commit. And if you've never committed to a sound before, it is terrifying and exhilarating at the same time. It's a similar thing to me setting up my guitar and my amp and dialing in all the effects that I want on the guitar tone and having that come out of the amp. So my reverbs, my delays, distortion, the whole thing, and then recording that to an audio track. That we seem to be more comfortable with, but doing something like this, we balk at. Even if you're using um, your interface and Ampire as your guitar amp software, this might be a cool way to try it. Put Ampire on the input, and then you're recording the amped sound, and you can't adjust the tone later. 
So it's not something that I do all the time, but enough people have asked me, is this even possible in Studio One? And the answer is absolutely yes. If you like Fat Channel, by the way, I didn't show you what those settings were. Um, it was Fat Channel with the Fet Comp doing a decent amount of compression, a little bit of EQ, and then analog delay set to a slapback delay sound with a ton of drive and the dry wet knob at 14%. So that's what you were hearing, that's what got printed. If you find settings that you like, and you wanna maybe just do, maybe not quite as aggressive sound, but have a little bit of that sweetening on the front end before it ever gets recorded, go for it. Why would you do that? What are the pros and cons of this approach? Well, the first, like I said, is commitment. You're committing to a sound on the front end. Second thing, it kills future indecisiveness. You, you can re-record the vocal if you want, but you can't go take away that slap back. You made the decision, now it's your choice whether to stick with it or to completely redo it. And that might force you to stick with the decision and keep moving forward. And then finally, the raw track sound is baked in. So if you're not going to mix this or you're sending this off to someone else, but you know this is the tone you want and you don't want them to miss it, you bake that into the sound itself. Now they or you're, you're kind of forcing their hand to keep the tone that you wanted there. And also, it's just a, a somewhat of an analog workflow, which is fun. If you can't have the hardware, this is one way to do that. You know, the poor man's analog hardware, if that makes sense. Okay, what are the cons of this approach? One, the sound is baked in. There's no take backs. You can't undo it after. You just can't. Two, it can be hard to dial in these sounds while you are the one recording. So if I'm singing and trying to dial in the compressor and the EQ, I'm not gonna hear it very clearly because I hear my voice in my head going wah, 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 but then I'm trying to hear this over the headphones, so it's not gonna be a super clear thing. This works better if you are the engineer and someone else is the performer because you can hear it clearly, um, but it's possible, it just, just keep that in mind, it takes a little extra work. And then finally, this approach is not what you might call necessary. It's risky, um, you can certainly get wonderful results without ever doing this, but it just, to me, it feels risky in a cool way. Like it's fun, you're kind of putting yourself out there. If you struggle with indecisiveness, maybe this will help you be more decisive. Or just do this on a single song or a single track just to see if you like this workflow. Um, there's something about knowing that every knob that I turn is gonna be committed for all eternity <laughs> on this track that makes me pay a little closer attention, makes me perform uh, with a little more focus. It makes me not be so flippant towards the music. And I think that's valuable in and of itself. So take it or leave it. I encourage you to at least think about it and play around with it. See if there are situations where this might make sense for you. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Joe from Personas. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Because you've got videos like this from me and Gregor and other folks at Personas. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.